today we're going to see the reactions for the carbon-carbon double bond um, hydrocarbons. So basically it's the alkene reactions. Uh, for those uh, reactions, so we will have in chapter six, uh, a summary for a reaction. So each reaction, it will obey the electrophilic addition reaction mechanism, which basically include two uh, steps in the reaction. Uh, the general formula, it will be these two that we have here in the, uh, in the document, which basically will have a carbon-carbon double bond, and we will have an one electrophilo and one nucleophilo in order to do that attack, okay? When we have something like that, basically we'll have two uh, steps in the reaction mechanism with basically the first one, it will be starting very slow because it's the formation for the carbocation intermediate. And then after that intermediate is a format, is going to react with the nucleophilo to form uh, the two sigma bonds at the end, okay? So we will have two different steps. One is the slow reaction that basically you will have that intermediate, which is the carbocation, which is not stable. So that's why when you have that um, intermediate format, because it's very unstable, they will react very quick with the nucleophilus, okay? So that's why in the second step, we have more quicker reaction in order to form those uh, sigma bonds, okay? So one of the reactions that we're going to see is the addition for the hydrogen allides. Um, in the allides for the periodic table, we have the bromium, we have the chloron, we have the fluorine, and we have the iodine, okay? So depends on what is the uh, allogen that is attaching to the hydrogen, we're going to see that reaction with the carbon-carbon double bond alkene, okay, compound that we have, okay? So here we have two uh, examples. For example, we have the hydrogen bromide and that hydrogen bromide is going to react with uh, the butane here, okay? That butane here, because we have a carbon-carbon double bond, is going to do that interaction with the hydrogen and the bromium, okay? So we have, two separate mechanisms. And what is adding is adding one um, element for hydrogen and one uh, element for, or one atom for the bromine. okay? So depends on what we have, we having some kind of addition in the uh, molecule. So that, that's why the carbon-carbon double bond is getting um, broke and you will have only a single one in that reaction. Okay, same thing is going to happen in the next reaction here that we have a cyclohexene and it's going to interact with the hydrogen uh, iodide. Okay, so basically the double bond is going to break and it's forming two sigma bonds, so two single bonds, which one it will have the hydrogen and the other one is getting substituted in with the uh, iodine atom. Okay. So the general reaction for that, it will be this kind of reaction that we have at the bottom that basically are, it can be any kind of alkene group, depends on how many carbons you have. So it can happen that you will have one double bond or maybe you can have more than one double bond, but it will be a different carbon-carbon uh, molecule, okay? And then you need to have the hydrogen alive in order to have that reaction to happen, okay? The mechanism for that, that kind of reaction, it will uh, follow the two steps reaction, which at the beginning, the carbon-carbon double bond is going to interact with the hydrogen for the hydrogen alive, okay? So that's why this double bond is going to interact with the hydrogen. The hydrogen, which is making a bond with the allogen is going to break. So depends on the position for the carbon-carbon double bond, we can have two products, okay? Uh, depends on the stability for these two products, you will see that some products is completely formed, 
or you will see that some produce is partially formed. So here, because we have this uh, molecule that has three carbons with the double bond in carbon position one and two, but has one methyl group in a position two, we have formed the terbutyl carbocation, okay? That terbutyl carbocation gets the positive charge in the carbon in position two, okay? So it's in position two here, and that carbocation is going to interact later with the nucleophilus, which is the halide ion, okay? And it's forming at the end the terbutyl chloride that has the chlorum attached to the second carbon, okay? What is exactly the carbocation that it was formed before? But what happened? When we have this molecule, because they have that carbon carbon double bond between the carbon one and two, they get protonated because it's losing the double bond that, that is uh, going to break or have that cleavage. And what is going to form it is a cation intermediate. But the position for the uh, intermediate, which is attaching the hydrogen, if the hydrogen is going to interact in a position for the carbon two, we will have the isobutyl cation, which in this case, um, the chlorine needs to be attached at the end. So it will be a terminal uh, halide which is not very usual. So basically uh, that this carbocation is not very stable. So that's why this kind of produce is not, is not forming at the end, okay? So we need to look for the carbocation that we are going to form, okay? So based on those stabilities for the carbocation, so we have here one chart that basically states how is the stability for those carbocation usually you have one that is very stable. And if that molecule, that carbocation, not is stable, they try to change to get the most stable possible, okay? So that's why we have some stability. So first, I mean, the most, the most uh, stable one is the tertiary carbocation, which basically has three substituents uh, for that carbon, okay? So when we have a secondary carbocation, they prefer, I mean, the, the stability is less compared to the tertiary. And when we have a methyl cation, that is the most, I mean, that's the lowest stability for that carbocation, uh, which in that case, it was the uh, example previously, we are forming the methyl cation. So that's why it was not very stable, okay? Yeah. And some produces cannot be formed because of that, okay? So depends on that stability, they need to form that intermediate and get the final uh, product, okay? Those uh, carbocation basically dictates what you have formed at the end. So depends on how is the Radio selective reaction, or basically how selective it, are, it is, this carbocation is going to react. So for example, here we have the reaction that it can be very uh, selective, highly selective, or it can be medium selective. When we have something that is medium selective, basically we are forming two different products, or maybe three different products, depends on the initial molecule that we have. Okay, but when we have that carbon-carbon double bond, basically at the end, which is basically at the end in the final or the uh, position one or position, uh, I mean the last position, which is a ter uh, terminal carbon, always it gives us a final product that is only one. Okay, but when we have a carbon carbon-carbon double bond, which is in the middle of the molecule, which is not a, ter a terminal carbon, it will have different uh, products, okay? It can have half, half of that, or it can have one in major proportion to the other one. So depends on that, we, 
we will see some kind of uh, products depends on the radio selective reaction and the initial uh, molecule that you have, okay, with the carbon fiber bond. So for example, here we have the previous uh, example that we only form one product, but when we have something that the carbon-carbon double bond is in the middle of the molecule, when we have the product format depends on the carbocation uh, that is forming, is going to be the one that is more stable because it's in the middle um, in the middle of the uh, main chain, you will see different products. So here we have between carbon uh, two and carbon three, that two position, two and three position. So that's why the uh, product, it will be not only one, it will be more than one because that uh, double bond is going to interact with the hydrogen ally that we have. And it will form one product, okay, with the uh, tertiary carbon. And based on the molecule, we can have also a secondary uh, carbocation form it. So that's why we get the uh, minor product, okay? Same thing is going to happen in the uh, cyclic molecules, okay? So it depends on which carbon is going to interact with the hydrogen ally, which is the one that is basically uh, doing that cleavage in the carbon-carbon double bond. Um, if this carbon here, where is the methyl attached, is getting that um, positive charge because the other carbon here next to that, I mean, the secondary position gets the hydrogen, the uh, carbon position one gets the charge and that is the one that is getting attached to the bromine. Okay, in this case. So that is the major product because it's a tertiary carbon cation form it. And then, because it's not all in that proportion, it can happen that we have form it a secondary carbocation, we have a minor product, okay? This is going uh, to happen because we have that, this kind of interaction here. Uh, so for example, here we have Carbon carbon double bond, they can do some kind of rearrangements in this case because it's a, a, a terminal carbon double bond. That double bond is going to interact with the hydrogen. But what happens when it's forming this carbocation? It can form the secondary carbocation, which is stable, but it, it gets the tendency to do the shifting here. So the position one and two they can do that shifting. And when they do that, it's forming the tertiary carbocation, which is more, uh, more stable, okay? So you will have two products, one in major proportion and the second in less proportion, okay? Because they have this kind of arrangement. Um, for example, here we have the same kind of uh, reaction, only that, uh, the methyl sheet is going to interact in the second position here, and it's going to form in the uh, tertiary carbon, which is the major product, and it is keeping in that uh, position, that methyl group is going to have that secondary carbon, okay? And you will have less amount of that product. That is the first reaction that we saw before. Basically, is the uh, um, the addition for the alkyl alides. Okay. Now we have the second type of uh, reaction that we can have when we have alkene groups. The alkene groups it can be acid catalyzed using water. Okay. And because it's an acid catalyzed, it's using some kind of acid in a very high concentration in order to add that molecule of water. Because we have a molecule of water, at the end, the product is going to have one hydrogen attached and one OH uh, molecule attached, okay? So at the end, we are forming an alcohol. 
Uh, the reaction mechanism is also two steps, okay? We are going to form um, that interaction that is forming that carbocation, okay? And then we're going to have that quickest reaction in, in order to add that nucleophilus and form the final product. So it will take also two steps, like I explained before. The only thing here is that in the recipe, we have the, um, in this case, sulfuric acid, or it can be any kind of very uh, concentrated acid. It needs to be very strong. And you add a lot of water. Okay. Uh, so basically here we are having the uh, acid catalyzed. So basically the sulfuric acid is going to interact with the carbon carbon double bond, okay? Which in this case is forming that uh, carbocation. Then we have the water molecule and that carbocation is going to interact with the nucleophile. In this case, it will be the water. And what is going to happen is that the uh, water molecule is attached to that carbon, which is protonated, and you will add another hydrogen in the other carbon that has the, the carbon carbon double bond before. Okay, so you will have an OH group and a hydrogen at the end, okay, which is being replaced by that uh, double bond carbon carbon. Okay. Same thing reaction, it can happen when we have also alcohol. So because the alcohol is, is very polar, similar to the water, I mean, the water also is polar because it has the OH group. So the alcohol is going to do that interaction too. Uh, in this case, we have the alkene. It can be any kind of alkene. That's why we have the R at the beginning. So it can be any kind of alkene. It needs to have a double, double, carbon, carbon, double bond in the molecule, and then we have in the recipe, methanol in a large proportion, and we have the acid. The acid is going to interact with the carbon-carbon double bond, like I explained before, but in this case, because we are adding a methanol or any kind of alcohol, you will form an ether. Instead of an alcohol group, you will form an ether because the alcohol is going to have uh, that interaction with the carbocation, okay, that OH. And what is going to happen is that the, in this case, the methanol is going to separate the methoxy with the hydrogen. So you will have one methoxy group and you will have an hydrogen attached to the uh, carbon where it was located the carbon carbon dot. Okay, so that's why at the end, we finish up here with an ether, okay? And because the methanol is still in large proportion, we will have a methanol at the end, okay? As a, another product. In the, in the other one, we have water at the end because it's in a large proportion. So here, because we have an alcohol, the final product, it will be an ether, okay? The other reaction that uh, we have that is, uh, obeys the substitution reaction is the hydroboration oxidation reaction. This kind of reaction has two major reactions going on. We need to have two steps. One is the hydroboration reaction, and then the second one is an oxidation reaction, okay? So we will have two steps, I mean, two major reactions. Um, the carbon-carbon double bond, it needs to be required, but in this case, this kind of recipe, in order to have that hydroboration oxidation, we need the borane molecule in order uh, to have that interaction, okay? What is going to form at the end is an alcohol group, 
okay, which is the primary answer. Okay. Um, the two steps reaction, I mean, the two reactions that is going to happen, the first one is the hydroboration. The hydroboration, you need to have the uh, nucleophilo and the electrophilo, but what happened? The nucleophilo and the electrophilo is in the same molecule because it's going to uh, have that boron uh, compound that has three hydrogens on it. But because this kind of um, molecule has an incomplete octet, it's very reactive with the carbon-carbon double bond, okay? So that one is going to interact with the carbon-carbon double bond in order to form the uh, alkyl borane, okay? In the case that we use a different borane that the substituent with the boron is not all hydrogens, we have another two options or uh, two general reactions, okay? Where the bromium, I mean, the, the boron here is partially saturated with hydrogen. So here we only have two hydrogen molecules attached to the boron, okay? It's still an alkyl borane, but in this case, has an alkyl group that has can be have any kind of uh, methane, ethyl, I mean, any kind of alkane group here, okay? And the second option that we can have is the dialkyl borane, that basically the borane is only having one hydrogen and has two alkane groups attached to that borane uh, molecule. So that's why we have the dialkyl borane. And at the end, we will form also some kind of borane molecules, but depends on the substituent. We can have the alkyl borane or three alkyl borane. Okay. So at the beginning, we use the regular borane that is completely saturated with hydrogens when it's going to interact with the carbon carbon double bond. What is going to happen is that the hydrogen and the boron with hydrogen is going to interact in that carbon carbon double bond, which is making single bonds. And at the end, you have one hydrogen attached to the carbon. Okay and a um, borane with hydrogen attached to the other card, okay? Once you have that kind of um, molecule, we will have the second step, which is the oxidation, okay? But in, I mean, in this case, it depends on the, uh, on the borane that you have, it can happen that is the first one, or if you have another borane that has an alkane substituents, it can happen the second option or the third option, okay? So that's why I'm putting these two also as a general reactions, because depends on the kind of boring that you have, you can follow this step or you can follow any other two, okay? Once you have that boring, you need to do the oxidation. So that's the second step in the mechanism. Remember they have number one, and then they have the number two. The number two is the oxidation. And that is, oxidation needs to have a media, okay? Which basically you need to have water, you need to have hydrogen peroxide and a basis, okay? With the basis, basically what is going to have is that kind of interaction with the hydrogen peroxide anion Okay, the, hydro, uh, the hydrogen peroxide is losing one proton for the base. So it's keeping the base uh, neutral in the water and it's forming the hydrogen peroxide anion. That anion is going to interact with the boron here, more making that uh, molecule intermediate which has a one to alkyl shift. And because we have water in the solution, is going to interact with the bromion, with the bottom, sorry. And is at the end, we will have an alcohol group with a water and the base, okay? Go back. 
In the case that we need to use the second option or the third option, the mechanism, it will be some kind of similar mechanism. The only thing is that at the end, you will get um, the, the brain with the alkene group that you basically remove, okay? And um, you will have water and the bases at the end, okay? So it will be some kind of similar situation. Um, the um, reaction number four that we're going to have in this carbon-carbon uh, double bond reaction summary is the addition for the halides, but in this case is when they are together, like um, in this case, the bromium or the chlorum, because it's getting an atom that has two elements together. And what happened when you have something like that, you need to have some kind of catalyst and some kind of solvent in order to that kind of a reaction. So here, the recipe requires that you have an organic solvent, which is the uh, methylene chloride. So we need to have that uh, addition here, okay? And because it's uh, two molecules or two elements together for the same kind, what is going to happen is that you're adding to each carbon that has a carbon-carbon double bond, one atom for each element, okay? <clears throat> so in this case, because you're adding uh, bromium, you will have two vesinal bromiums. Uh, in the case that you're using chlorum, you will have two vesinal chlorums, okay? So it will be a dichloride or dibromide, depends on the uh, alkyl halide that you use, okay? That is the most common, um, it's very uh, rare that we will see uh, iodide, uh, like I2, because the iodide is later and unstable. And also same thing it will be happening with the fluorine uh, is unstable, okay? So that's why uh, we have these two as a general. In the reaction mechanism, what is going to happen is that the bromium is going to interact with the carbon-carbon double bond for the alkene group, and is forming a cyclic ion, okay? So it's forming that cyclic with the halide, and then the second step is that the uh, nucleophile for the halide is going to interact with the other part, making uh, those, uh, allergens, vesinal halogens, okay? In this case, it's no carbocation arrangement. So basically what is going to happen is that you're attaching exactly where is the location for the carbon-carbon double bond. So basically in this case, you will have a bromium attached to the first carbon and then another bromium to the second carbon, okay? Like I explained before, when we add in iodine, iodine is very unstable. It's not very common that we will see some kind of reaction going on with him. Okay, so that's the only thing that uh, we need to address in this area. Okay. Um, another reaction that we're going to see is the formation for the halohydrins. So basically, for the halohydrins, halohydrin has uh, an allogen and also has a OH group, okay? So that's the definition for the halohydrins. You will have these two uh, functional groups in the molecule. And when you're doing that, basically you need to follow some kind of recipe. So in order to have that allogen, you need to have an allogen in the recipe and you need to have water, okay? So here we have two examples. So it can be, like I explained before, it, are, it can be any kind of alkene. We have the double bond and we have the bromine in this case. That bromium molecule is going to interact with the carbon-carbon double bond and we have water. 
the media is water. So what is going to happen that is uh, here is once they do that uh, interaction is forming that uh, carbocation or cyclic ion, okay? And the water is going to interact. So basically that uh, molecule of uh, water is going to interact with the carbon, okay? And is forming that bonding with the carbon, which in this case needs to be some kind of rearrangement because that cyclic molecule is going now to have like a linear form. So we have the bromine going to the final or the terminal carbon, and the alcohol is going to be in the secondary position. And once you have that, at the end, you will have these two additions. So basically you will have an alkane that has a molecule of halogen and water, okay? Or alcohol group in that area, okay? And the final side products, it will be water in the solution, okay? This uh, formation for the halohydrins has a different proportion, depends on the interactions. So that's why we have two products. So it depends on which one is the most stable carbocation. We will have one major product for that stable carbocation and one minor product for the uh, secondary uh, carbocation. So that's why we have two products here, okay? Water, and because we have, I still having some allergens in the solution, in ion forms, that's why we get um, hydrogen bromide or hydrogen chloride in the solution, okay? Um, depends on the carbocation that we form it. If we have something like this one, uh, we have here the methyl group, the carbon-carbon double bond is here in the position two and three. So this carbon-carbon double bond, it can have a tertiary carbon, but they can do the shifting. I mean, it can have the secondary carbon. And if they do the shifting one, two shift position, they can have the tertiary carbon, okay? So that's why we have one major product using the tertiary carbon. And then we have the uh, other product that has uh, a secondary carbon, okay? Other reaction that we can have based on the uh, reagents is when we have halogens and instead of having water in the solution, we have some kind of salt or we have alcohol groups. So here we have one example using the hydrogen halide with an alcohol group, which is here the methanol. So what we are adding because it's doing that interaction with the carbon-carbon double bond here with the uh, halogen is going to add one halogen atom and is going to also add the methoxy group in the other carbon that has the carbon-carbon double bond. So you will have uh, an ether with an halogen in the final molecule. Okay. Also, when we have uh, the sodium chloride, sodium chloride is going to interact because sodium, when they dissociate in water, you will have molecule of sodium and I mean ions for sodium, ions for chlorine. Because you have bromine in the solution, what is going to happen is that the bromine is going to interact with the carbon-carbon double bond at the same time that they interact with the chloro. So that's why when we have salts with allergens, those salts is going to react and form uh, single bonds with the alkene group, okay? So at the end here for this example, we have bromine attached and chloro attached group, okay? 
And it's because when you have something like that in the solution, the salt is going to separate and it's forming nucleophiles. Okay. Those uh, are very strong because it's a light and it's going to interact with those uh, carbon carbon double bonds in the solution. Okay. Another reaction that we will see is the addition for epoxides. So for making an epoxide, we need to have a carbon, carbon double bond and we need to have some kind of acid, okay? But in this case, the acid needs to be at two oxygens together as an acid. So after the carbonyl group, you will have two oxygens together and these two oxygens together with the carbonyl at the beginning is called a peroacid, okay? That is a functional group for the peroacid. So it can be any kind of peroacid or pero peroxyacid. Um, that's why we have an R at the beginning. What is going to happen is that this carbon-carbon double bond is going to break and is forming a ring structure with the oxygen, okay? Forming uh, the functional group called epoxy, okay? And because it's only interacting the oxygen, you will have the remaining part of the acid, okay? So you will have the uh, initial part for the peroxy acid at the end as a carboxylic acid. When they interact, what they what, it, what is going to happen is that when you have the peroxy acid here, okay, that carbon carbon double bond is going to interact with the last or the final OH group, okay, which is making that interaction between the electrophile and the nucleophile, okay, and is forming that ring structure. So this oxygen is going to be detached. And at the end, you will have the carboxylic acid and the epoxy. Okay. This uh, mechanism is kind of uh, similar when you have the, the bromium addition. Okay. That reaction is going to happen. With the bromium, we have two bromions, and you see that only one bromium is detached. You have the other in the solution because it's only adding one at a time. And then um, after the addition for the first one, because the other carbon is still, um, is still uh, looking for another bonding, that's why the other bromine is going to interact and you have two vesinal bromines. But here, the reaction mechanism, what is going to happen is that this carbon-carbon double bond is going to make a bond with the oxygen. So basically in the octet rule, it's getting saturated the oxygen so they don't have any more electrons for sharing, okay? So that's why it's forming that cyclic epoxy structure at the end. Um, another reaction that we're going to see is the ozonolysis reaction. In the ozonolysis reaction, what we're going to see is that we use the ozone or O3, okay, to do the interaction with the carbon-carbon double. When we're going to happen this kind of reaction, what is going to happen is that the carbon-carbon double bond is going to break exactly in that interaction. So these two double bonds is going to break and is forming that uh, double bond with the uh, carbon, uh, with the oxygen from the ozone, okay? So we will form those uh, molecules. These molecules, it can be a ketones or it can be an aldehyde, depends on what we have previously or after the double bond that's the remaining of the molecule at the end. So that's why we have here, like a reminder, when we have a 
carbonyl group and after the carbonyl group, we have an alkene group attached to it. That is a functional group for the ketone. When we have a hydrogen after the carbonyl group, we have an alkene functional group. So it depends on what we have at the beginning of the molecule and at the end of the molecule, we will see that interaction that basically uh, you can form a ketone or an aldehyde, okay? Uh, some uh, for the mechanism, some examples here, we will see that we have the ozone, ozone is O3. So we have O3 here, that is an electrophilus. And what is going to happen is going to interact with the carbon-carbon double bond here that is forming the cyclic structure, which is called the muscle, molosome, molosome, okay? And because this molecule, which is a cyclic, is still doing that interaction, they going to be detached in order to be more stable, okay? So they detach, or they break exactly in the area where the carbon carbon double bond is making single bonds, and then they do the arrangement, and that single bond is going to break. And when it's doing that breaking, one area gets the carbonyl group here. <clears throat> and depends, see here, we have different alkanes. That's why I have R, R1, R2, okay? And another with hydrogen. Depends on the type of um, alkene that I have, okay? It can happen that these two at the bottom, we have hydrogens, but depends on which substituent we have, we will form that uh, molecule for the ozonide. And after that ozonide, we will see those uh, cleavage and it's going to uh, remove to be an aldehyde or a ketone, okay? So for that ozonolysis, we have two examples here. One um, is a cyclic molecule that has the double bond here. And we have a linear uh, alkene that has the double bond here in the terminal card. For that, we need a specific okay, um, recipe in order to happen. We need the ozone, but we need to have some kind of a reduction in order to break that ozone, ozone, ozonide uh, molecule that we form at the end. Okay? So that's why it's two reactions that is going to happen. The first one is the ozonolysis with the ozone, which is forming that uh, ozonide compound, and then we will have another reaction in order to do that reduction, okay? In the recipe, at the end, we will have an aldehyde or a ketone. Depends on what you have at the beginning for the carbon-carbon double bond molecule, okay? Remember, ours, it can be any kind of alkene or it can be anhydrous, okay? So depends on what we have, this carbon, carbon double bond is going to be removed because it's going to form the ozonide. And at the end, the ozonide is going to break. And you will have the first portion for the molecule plus the second portion for the molecule, okay? Which in this case, it can be an aldehyde plus an aquito, okay? Uh, here, specifically, we have two examples. So here, we need to look before and after. When we have something like that, we have a pentane here before, we have the carbon-carbon double bond, and then we have uh, two metal groups after the uh, carbon double bond. We have the a recipe for the ozonolysis. So basically what we have at the end, it will be a ketone, okay? Which include the uh, pentane here, and we have, in this case, another ketone because we have 
methyl group and methyl group. Okay. So that's why we have two ketones. So basically, remember, we need to look what we have at the beginning and what we have at the end after that carbon carbon double bond. Okay. Depends on what we have, that is the position for that uh, structure. Okay. Here in the second example, we have is a pentene, which in the carbon-carbon uh, double bond is in a position one and two. So what is going to happen is when it's going to break, you will have the four carbons here, okay? And the other molecule will have only the methyl group. So that's why, because we have only this methyl group, you will form an aldehyde and also in the, uh, for carbons here, you will have also an aldehyde, okay? So that's why we have something like that. And we are forming two aldehydes because that molecule one is going to separate is forming aldehydes, okay? You need the recipe, so you need the ozonolysis in order to make the ozonide. Then you need another reaction in order to do the reduction, okay? Once you have the ozonide, you can use any of these two reagents. So it can be seen with the um, acid, or you can use the sulfate compound in order to reduce the ozonide. Okay. When you have something like that, remember it's a cyclic. What is going to happen is that it's going to have that cleavage. One gets the O, the other one gets the other O, and the other O, it keeps in the solution forming water, okay? Um, so when we have something like that, we have uh, the ozonolysis here. Uh, we can form ketones or we can form uh, aldehydes from that, okay? So that is going to happen. Okay, so we are going from products to the reagent. If we compare that, so we're going from this area to here. Okay, um, and we need to see what is going to happen in that reaction. So basically, we need to look what we have at the beginning of the, uh, I mean, previously to the carbon carbon double bond, and then after the carbon carbon double bond. Here we have two methyl groups attached to this carbon, then we have hydrogen with a linear alkane. So that's why, because we have a linear alkane attached to the hydrogen, this one, it will be a, a key, an aldehyde, and this one, it will be a ketone because we have a methyl group, a methyl group, okay? So depends on that, we need to do the assumptions and see which are the products that we are for, okay? Um, the radio selective, the stereo selective, and the reactions, we need to look how we're going to interact. So basically, the radio selective reaction is when you have an A reagent and you can form one than, I mean, more than one product. Depends on the product that you form it. Um, it can be constitutional isomers, okay, so, or it can be some st stereo isomers. When we have a radio selective reaction, it's very specific. So basically, you will form one in more proportion. So here, in that case, we are forming B in more proportion than C, okay, and it's because of this carbocation that we can have depends on the uh, carbocation uh, arrangement. It can be more stable if the carbocation is going to do the shifting to get the tertiary carbocation. That is the major product that it will be uh, forming. If they cannot do that arrangement, you will have some kind of similar proportion, okay? So depends on those, we need to look and see how is the uh, stabilization for those carbocations? Because those are the ones that basically dictate how much or 
how 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 much product you can have is only one product or do you have more than one product okay um <clears throat> when you have a stereoselective reaction you will form different stereoisomers it can be in similar proportion or it can be in different proportions so basically a is the reagent it will be forming different stereoisomers and if the reaction is moderated stereoselective that it will be forming one more in compared to the other one but if the uh, reagent is not very stereoselective you will have some kind of uh, similar proportion for those stereoisomers okay that's very important in order to see which are the products that we are forming here i have a summary for the different reactions that we uh, discussed previously we have a carbon carbon double bond molecule and depends on what you have in the recipe you can form um, alcohols you can form ketones you can form epoxides you can form halohydrines or you can form also uh, al alkanes depends on the uh, reaction and also you can form vesinal halogens in the uh, reaction so here i have all the summary so here depends on the alkane and what I have in the recipe, if I'm using uh, hydrogen bromide, which I'm adding is uh, one hydrogen and one bromine to the molecule. If I have a bromine molecule with water, what I will form in is an hydrohydrine. So basically I'm adding one atom for bromine and one OH uh, to the molecule. Okay, so depends on what I have, Remember, uh, we need to see what is the recipe. Uh, when we have the carbon-carbon double bond, that it requires that specific conditions. Um, in the case that we want to do uh, an aldehyde or a ketone, we can use the ozonolysis, okay, in order to have that interaction and we can form a ketone or an aldehyde, okay? Uh, also, we can form alcohols using the borohydrate with the reduction, which in this case required two steps that it will give me a primary alcohol, okay? Also, I can form alcohols using water with an acid and it will form some kind of alcohols. So depends on that, I can use any of these depends on what is the product that I want to form, uh, I need to use one of these in order to get to that form. Okay. Depends on the um, electrophilic addition reaction, we need to look for the stereochemistry. Um, when we have a reactant, which is, doesn't have any asymmetric center, so basically has an alkene group, but doesn't have one carbon that has more uh, functional groups attached to it, it would be only one asymmetrical center, the product, it will be a racemic mixture, okay? When we have asymmetric centers, they will produce more than one product. So it can be some kind of uh, stereoisomers. Those stereoisomers, it can be diasteroisomers, depends on the proportions and how they are uh, arranging the space, okay? Other thing that we need to consider is when we're adding um, hydrogen or the peroxy acid, we need to see how we're going to do that addition when we have a thin addition. Thin addition basically is getting to the same location for that addition. When we have uh, an anti-addition, basically what is going to happen is the addition it gets in 
opposite side, okay, for the uh, subsidiary. Um, another thing to consider is when we have hydroboration oxidation that we will have in the final product as an addition of water. And when we have bromium or chlorine, which is the uh, vesinal products, we will have an anti addition. Okay. Taking in consideration, I use this chart or table, which is the table 6.1. Depends on the alkanes that I have and the reaction. I need to see what is the type of addition that I am having at the end, and what is the stereoisomers that I'm forming at the final product, okay? Here is some examples. We will look uh, later those examples in order to see what is going to interact. I try to put one example for each of the reaction. Remember, we have eight reactions. So depends on what we have and goes back here. If we do the um, water addition with the acid, we will form some alcohol. So I have one reaction that obeys that. I have one example for those. Um, depend if we are doing the bromine addition to the alkene group uh, molecule. We will have a vesinal bromules. Um, if we only adding um, the peroxy acid, we are forming the boxy group. So we need to see how is the uh, molecules that we get at the end. So I have some examples here. I will discuss those uh, later um, in the next video in order to see uh, different example for each one. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, looking the video. Um, if you have any question, please uh, send by email to me. I can go in more details to you guys. Thank you. Uh, Thank you.